Yep. Saturday morning, come support the boot with all. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> come out, come. Watch out, y'all stop looking at me. Hey, y'all come out and support the dog Saturday morning, 8.30. Be there. Come watch some football, baby. So if you take football away, it's going to have a really, really big impact. Other things that could be done, you move it into the spring. Swansea football is going to have to look forward to the 2021 season as news came today that the 2020 season has officially been canceled. Education, man. Ready to get this fall 2021 semester started. Yeah. These guys, we can depend on these guys. Really cool. They're always on time, on and off the field. Everywhere they go. Are going to go into sports medicine or PTA or something like that. Um, it is a good book to have, uh, it is a great resource. Book. Uh, kind of, not really though. I don't really like class for real, for real, but I go, got to get my degree. Baby, first day, first day of class. Front row, baby, front row. I'm, I'm going to move. I'm going to make it happen. So these two are these two. So what we've done with our offense is just run. Now, we still probably need to put the field joker here, right? Mm-hmm. Out of the police. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Where are the police? I think our staff camaraderie is second to none. I mean, we play noon ball together every day. You know, we hang out with each other. You know, we're, we're, we're a tight group that knows how to work well together. Uh, and I'm, I'm proud of my staff. Not just, not just who they are as coaches, but who they are as men. Um, as fathers and husbands and you know it makes my job easier when I know they're teaching the same life lessons that I'm trying to get across. In 2010 thought I was doing something and now I'm rapping with a pro or something. I guess the track don't really stick unless he's doing something. And I never fit the shoe until I do or something. Yo, racing myself like teeth, boy, it's the same old route on some new concrete, my homie. Ball, find a way to catch it. Still check spot, nothing ever changes, right? Do your rule. I met Chet in 2005, the December or January 2005. I played at a junior college and then uh, transferred to Emporia State, where he was a quarterbacks coach, and um, was there with him for two years. And that's when I first met Holly, too, his wife. And after our season, I was like, "Hey, I'm looking to." go be a GA somewhere and that's when I got a call from Chet and he was down at a division two school in Mississippi called Delta State and he offered me opportunity to go down there and coach with him 
you know, they had just had Lauren, their daughter, and I would go over there on occasion to go hang out with them and we'd play Wii Golf and whatnot and have good evenings. And that's when I was like, hey, if you guys want to go do something, I'll watch Lovell and I'll babysit. So that's when I started to really kind of, it started becoming more of a, of a family type deal. While I was at Dodge, I was blessed to, to run into a girl that was doing class, well, she was a teacher, I was doing class checks for my receivers. Hunter was outside directing some students on where to go to class, and she kind of approached me like, well, what are you doing? And I said, you know, class checking, and then I was obviously interested and kind of pursued it from there, and that's how we met. As I, the first day of school in 2000, oh boy, this is gonna be in trouble. What would that be? 17, 2017, fall 2017 is when I met her and um, that's when we started dating and finally proposed to Hunter and we went to Hinton to Red Rock uh, Canyon and, and went up there and proposed there and before Chad obviously knew I had the ring I kind of mentioned that I was going to do it and he said hey well while you're at it ask Hunter if if she wouldn't mind I, I officiate you guys wedding and I was like well I'd be okay with that I doubt she's going to be so I proposed she said yes we were on the way back I called Chet let him know and he goes hey did you already ask her I go I totally forgot so I go babe I was like do you care if Chet married us and she goes absolutely not sounds great so he got online paid the whatever 15 bucks got ordained to be a minister and the rest is history Good. Right. strike hey I'm not here right my hands are already stagnant right and I'm here I'm here. I'm just protecting my chest. Um, got married in June of 20. Yeah, got married in June of 20. So we were dating for uh, seven, seven years. years, right? And then we got engaged and Finally. we were engaged for a year <laughs> and then got married. And now here we are. We got a little baby on the way. Baby on the way. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm, ex I'm excited, I think, more or less just to be a dad. I think that's what I'm excited for, but I'm nervous at the same time because I've never done it. But like Pope always says, like that's whenever that's what coaches do, right? We figure stuff out and kind of just go with it. Being a coach's wife, I actually had two of very strong coaches' wives that kind of like led me into this. My mother-in-law, who's the greatest of all coaches' wives, I always tell people, I'm like, I'm not really the best, she is. But Brenda is the best, and then my sister-in-law, she's also a coach's wife. And then just our community of coaches' wives in Swasu. Like, I came in as a girlfriend. I didn't come in as a fiance or a wife. We were just dating, and they fully welcomed me in with open arms, and they are literally a phone call away at any time. That's the profession that we got in, uh, where it's my our livelihood is based off of uh, Kind of the performance of 18 to 22 year olds right so i gotta make sure that those guys are in line ready to go um, but no having her and being there and supporting me but it's also you know she supports those kids too you know having those kids over here um and she gives them goodie bags after games right at home games and goodie bags for away games that i gotta pass out and whatnot um, but those kids are her kids and i think that they see that as well, and it's not just a, you know. Our door is oh, always open for them. Yeah, like if somebody needed some food and whatnot, like I know that they'd be over here eating. Um, that's never going to be an issue because those those dudes are ours, you know, um, and they mean a lot. A lot. Go, oh, get to it, get to it, get to it, get to it. Ready, go. Good, relax, relax. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Finish, finish, finish. I would say probably the best way to balance it is because of Kayla. Like, I don't think there is any way that I would be a successful coach or especially now a father without her. I think something that we've always tried to talk about as a staff is bringing in guys to be good husbands and good sons and, and good fathers down the road. And as much as we've talked about it, whether it's been here at Swasu or anywhere before, is that we've preached it and talked about it, but now it's like, it's real. So when I talk to recruits and I talk to our players, it's like, I want you guys to be good role models because 
my daughter's gonna be around at practice. Like, there's, it's inevitable that she's gonna be in a position meeting. She's gonna sit in my office and you guys are gonna come around and the way you treat her is how hopefully you're gonna treat, I mean, not just kids in general, but women down the road or whoever it might be. Um, and I think that's gonna be very, very <laughs> life-changing and whether it's recruiting or just, just in general of how we deal with guys. There you go, nice and calm with your feet. That's Good fake slice there, Andrew. Just want to give him a little head nod. That, that's what's really going to get you open, the head nod. Make him think you're slicing him, you know what I mean? It's the little things. Okay, dogs on one time, one time. Dogs! It's hard on the family, but when you marry a football coach, you, you, you know what you're getting into. I mean, I was a football coach when, when Holly and I started dating. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's always been you know those hours, especially in season. It's it you know she knows, she knows what to expect, but it does make those times special. You know, especially times when her and Lo show up, and I, I'm not expecting them. They just they just show up one day, and those those days are really cool. I went home last night. I hadn't been home in, in a few days, and my wife was in Florida, but I got to take Lo to school this morning, and you know, it's fun. You know, I missed it. It's not like we have some revelation conversation or anything, but. It's nice just to have a conversation with my daughter at times. Here you go. Right? Yeah. Okay. To this day, when I hear that song, I see you standing there on that lawn. Discount shades, store bought tan, flip flops, and cut off jeans. Somewhere between that set and sun, I'm on fire, I'm born to run. You looked at me and I was done. She was a, an active child, kind of like her dad, to try to find things to, to keep her busy. So we just enrolled her in some rec gym classes. I think she was four or five, maybe. She did a rec class and then they had her try out at five years old for the competitive team, um, which was a pretty rigorous tryout. And then they asked her to join the, the competitive team and she's been doing it ever since, so. And it'll release through the bottom if you have too much slack in that broken shoulder angle and it's gonna pull it out and it's gonna stall your giant. Yeah. I'm smart enough to know that my daughter's not an Olympic gymnast nut, so I just wanted to have her uh, have a good experience and gain some confidence and some you know, friends and be competitive and uh, everything that we've asked she's done there. So. Uh, mirror, mirror technique. You you decided I want to fire out the ball. So when I fire, I decide I'm going to fire out the ball. I'm here. Get on the heart out. Well, I ended up at Swasu, um, 2005. Uh, it was a great opportunity for me and my family. But one of the reasons I chose Swasu is because I wanted my family to be able to watch me play. You know, being from a small town in Frederick, Oklahoma, um, my dad at the time, who who was with me, uh, you know, was on dialysis at the time. So I made the decision to choose to come play a Swasu over southeastern Oklahoma State. But that was one of the reasons I wanted to play a Swasu, was to make sure my father was going to have the opportunity to come and watch me play. Unfortunately, he never did. He passed away after a week after I graduated from high school. But my mom, it was still close enough for my mom to be able to come and play, and my sisters and, and the rest of my family. Well, the Bulldog pride, I mean, that I have here is, is all the blood and sweat and tears I put into this program as a player. Uh, now getting to do it as a coach has been a, has been a privilege uh, for me, not just for me, but the, my family as well. Uh, and that's just showing up every day with the blue collar mindset. Because at the end of the day, I'm trying to set a, a standard with those guys for their future. And I want them to be the best that they possibly can be, not only just as football players, but as growing men. Former All-American is on the wall. Um, I just want to talk to you guys what it's like being a Bulldog. It means everything to me of being a Bulldog, guys. I faced a lot of adversity of my time being here at Swasu, from whether it was on the field or whether it was back at home with my family. But at the same time, I decided to step up to the plate and take advantage of this opportunity to get my degree here. All right, I'm the second person in my entire family to get a bachelor's degree. I'm the first to get a master's, all right? That's, that means a lot. 
All right? I'm very emotional. Because this place means a lot. All right. Very emotional. I decided to come back here to coach. To be with you guys. All right? I met my wife here. My first child, I got three kids. They're all gonna be a part of this thing. Everything I do, sport is blue. So when you step out on that field, guys, you're not just doing it for yourself. You're doing it for the rest of the dogs, the past dogs, and even the future dogs. You guys got that. You guys probably like, man, coach up there crap. But I can tell you this, that's because this place means a lot to me. It's family. You guys got that? It's always going to be part of You're always going to have a path here. You guys put your foot on this campus. You're always going to have a path here. Or some part is part of your life forever. And it's part of my life forever. Not just as a player, but now as a coach. And we all got to try to live up to that standard. I love, and every, love every, each one of you guys for being a part of this program. All right? I truly do. All right? But continue to put forth and get yourselves a degree out of here and leave the rest on the field. Ball out each and every day. You guys got that? All right, let's get this thing rolling.